I was once told by my father, "You kids don't do half the things that we used to do." We thought we were very modern. Our parents thought they were very modern. You think you are very modern. Every generation is modern only. By the time you finish your studies and actually you become positive contributors to society, you have to earn your own living and settle your own life. Fools never learn even from their experience. Now very few people dare to be different. Now we think that when we go against tradition we are different but really speaking if you can go against trends then you are different. Hi I'm Samiji all of us are very happy to be here with you it's a very unique opportunity we all of us have to you know uh, also bring out, out our thoughts and thoughts of people at in our age group and uh, today uh, we are going to be talking about the topic is let's get real relationships career and more so uh, so maybe we are going to bombard you with some questions on all of these topics okay, i'm not blown away <laughs> <laughs> So uh, Swami ji I'll go first. So as the society has evolved times have changed and uh, the aspirations and goals of this generation has also evolved. Um especially where it comes to financial goals and growth, career, uh marriage and the time and duration framework around it, the intent of having kids. Keeping this in mind, I have I have two questions. The first one is um how does one internalize uh when you know an older generation with good intent comes up with some questions regarding these things and uh, in a way that how do we internalize it so that we don't destructively disrupt our own thought process in short you don't want to listen to them <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know we must always respect the wisdom of those who have gone through the experience of life such as parents grandparents teachers listen to them and if you are convinced of whatever course of life you want to take you should be able to convince them no they are well best well wishers don't think that they are old fashion i was once told by my father you kids don't do half the things that we used to do so you think that you are modern but if you ask your grandparents they will tell you how modern they were and how revolting your parents were <laughs> so do listen to them take their view point understand it and see how best it suits your modern living really speaking we thought we were very modern our parents thought they were very modern you think you are very modern every generation is modern only yeah and we think that our issues are new but let me tell you these are the same questions we asked our elders and our elders told us that they asked their elders yeah so we think that it's different but in fact all the questions you ask the answers are there in the mahabharat so sound yeah i think that answers my second question as well because it was about how one should respond to the elders when they bring up a question like that so that they have enough faith in what we're trying to do they trust your understanding no they will they will agree with you and some things if they don't you should try to understand so swamji swamji the timelines of things have changed though right from our parents generations like we were talking earlier swamji and even by the time someone finishes school and then if they want to do further education then now cost of living like by the time you are ready to buy a house or all of these things even if you want to listen to your parents it's it's hard to <laughs> like how do we um how do we explain that to them and get them to trust that we are thinking about things but we need time to also like situate ourselves properly see if the way we have created our lifestyle is really not according to the laws of nature now each time society has created its own setup its own lifestyle its own culture because our whole education system work system you know careers which have taken so much importance are taking so long by the time you finish now uh, 
what to say bachelor's degree has become undergrad so which means you have to do master degree to be a grad so what will happen by the time you finish your studies and actually you become positive contributors to society you have to earn your own living and settle your own life i mean the most productive part of your life the most dynamic part of your life is in the 20s and you're still studying i mean this conversation doesn't happen though matlab you know when we talk with our friends right everybody has you know i want to do this i want to do that right and it's like this one part of our life which is like blown out of like proportion and importance and then we forget that there are other things uh, to to life and that's why i think the relationship scenario has also changed because you are studying right you can't be sort of sure about uh, who you are dating or who you want to be with but then it's like okay now i have some desires so there were like what to do this is a way out of it and then it brings its own complications and all of that so but then this fact what you just mentioned it, it's not talked about a lot and therefore people don't understand this i think yeah that's the whole thing that biological laws don't change right so then what happens is that we have all these other issues in society which we'll have to deal with and each time if you do not have a system in place or we are quick enough to create a system everything goes wild and afterwards it's too late and the mess you create your children will have to suffer so they'll create a greater mess <laughs> so that's why we have to understand her saying when the elder say something there's a time for marriage also there's time for career also now again we have broken up our family systems each one wants to get married and have their own house even ecologically really speaking it's a disaster because each one wants sufficient space society will have to go through a turmoil to recognize that we may have to go back to our old systems just like now in diet in food we are all talking about ethnic food going back to organic food doesn't happen no same way we will have to say let's get married at 90 <laughs> and start having children instead of dogs in the house of puppies in the house <laughs> so you see even the parenting instinct at a certain age magnifies nowadays they say okay we can't have children we are not married and uh, or even if you are married we have got some desires and ambitions so let's have puppies <laughs> no it's nothing wrong having puppies but they're not substitute for children <laughs> so this is how then we try to find out we adjust our feelings we adjust our uh, pattern of life so each generation if they want to reinvent they'll come and invent the same thing only because the laws of nature are the same suppose you forget about gravity or what newton said or what our great you know rishi said about gravity when you discover gravity what will you discover the same thing same thing that yeah. if you jump from here you're going to fall down now <laughs> <laughs> there are these terms like dink okay so dink is double income no kids right so it's like uh, both of the uh, spouses are earning and you sort of travel the world you go on these vacations like that has kind of become the mainstream thought process Uh, and and all of that so yeah i think uh, this this is the iteration of the old uh, thought i would say this is still relevant no then if you're not having children don't have children then don't suddenly have children at old age see the problem is that at that time we feel we don't want it and then afterwards we want it and we can't get it so everything has its time your fertility is highest in your 20s and for a woman to deliver you know before the 30s is easier for her so these are laws of nature now when we don't live according to laws of nature then there will be definitely with the uneasiness stress challenges that happen now if you're ready to take it up take it up but every time society goes through this turmoil not knowing where we are heading and that's why it's only the great thinkers who give thought to it and establish dharma dharma is not some code of conducts only dharma is not some law or punishment by god but how best 
we can live in society we can live in this world that's why we must understand that little bit we must understand our mind at this moment we are only driven by our impulse i desire this let me just do this let me just enjoy this but our long term enjoyment is what we don't think at that time so a little bit of thought we have to give not do what other people are doing what is it that you want in your life if you want a family then there's a right time for family if you want a family then there's a right way of affording the family so once you're clear of what you want then only you can plan out your life your income whether you need a house on your own so i think this fits in perfectly to my next question because i was going to ask we have like i think we have a set of values that we try and make our decisions by but then whether it be like social media or the people like just society around us our own expectations there are certain trends as well and so when we want to make these decisions is there a way of distinguishing like am i actually making it based on a value versus a trend and then even especially when we're talking about parents generation so each generation is modern as swamiji said it according to their time they like they're modern but then as we ourselves grow up we want to and we want to think independently we come up with our own ideas about certain topics how do we know if these are values or if they're trends whether they will work in the long run because they may be different to what our parents were thinking what the older generation is thinking so there are trends only whenever there is confusion go back to the books of dharma which tell you now if you go back say to mahabharat everything that we are going through today whether living together whether different types of relationships gender issues whether you're talking about uh, uh, you know cloning everything really speaking has been experimented with and they don't say do's or don'ts we can see for ourselves what was the consequences of it no huh? now very few people dare to be different now we think that when we go against tradition we are different but really speaking if you can go against trends then you are different all great people in their own times were different to the trends in fact they were trend setters so really speaking they were trend setters and they reestablished dharma i use the word dharma but particularly because really no english translation not righteousness not right just way, right way of living but a sensible way of living according to the laws of nature you know so our own personal laws as human beings what do we represent so a deeper understanding of that is necessary and that's really speaking spiritual knowledge people think spiritual knowledge is either meditation or sitting in a cave or when you're under stress you no know, there's going to a spa that's what people think but really spiritual living is inquiring for yourself what is it that you want as to what are the consequences of the actions that we do really speaking we are not creating new trends we are just carrying on trends under different names it's almost as if it's a different wave and yeah. of the same sea yeah. that comes and like eventually subsides yeah 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 and and society goes into waves or circles so it keeps on happening so every youth of every generation goes through this dilemmas and therefore i said learn from the past and then chalk out your own future but whatever you decide be ready for the consequences they may be good they may be harmful don't get depressed dejected or blame rather learn from the experience See, if you have to experiment in life, in the sense, I don't say experiment with drugs or experiment with these things, but one, say when you experiment with, say, a lifestyle or something, be ready for its consequences, and learn from those consequences. And sooner you learn, the better, because the signs start coming immediately. That, for example, these multiple relationships. So, see the consequences of it when there is no commitment in a relationship. 
Now, don't people know what are the effects of drugs? Yet they think it's not going to happen to me. I'm in control. See, so we know the consequences, but we turn a blind eye to it. So I was told one thing during my youth days: fools never learn, even from their experience. Intelligent one learn from their experiences, but wise ones are those who learn from other people's experiences. <laughs> So actually, I really like that because when I think in my early twenties, you hear a lot from people. You have so much time. Why are you worried about this? You have so much time. Whether it's what job, like at that time, I was not sure if I wanted to be a journalist or a lawyer or something completely different. And everyone just said you have so much time. Like whether it was relationships, where, where I want to live, anything. And actually, I, I think the way that Swamiji put it of like, you have choices, and then those choices have consequences. Is a is. A better way to understand it, because if we say we have time, what does that mean? <laughs> like we all have time. Um, uh, also, the fact that uh, the youth generally has a tendency that okay, we are in a flow of free fall, and we'll not experience the thud. So they're like, let's go in, let's do this, let's do that, and they almost have a sense of like, okay, this will not happen to me, like you said, Swami Ji. So I think it's very true that. We need to like sit and dwell upon our actions and not just do it. I think that's a very yeah, good daily point. introspection is necessary. Yeah, and also you must have some anchor in your life, you know, some lighthouse in your heart to know that how far you are going away from you know your goal, how far you are going away from your principles, how far you are going away from your culture. This is something that you must hold to, hold on to, which is permanent, which is long-standing. Now keep that, and then around the periphery, every youth will want to, you know, expand, <laughs> expand his or her, you know, scope or vision. And why not? We might discover something great, but don't move away from your principle. Don't move away from your cultural values. Certain traditions may you know, decline over a period of time, but the universal values don't change. Keep that as your pivot. You know, keep some ideal or hero in your life. You know, so keep that, and then around that, see what is your individuality brings into your life and your society. Then you will also be linked with the totality. Because that's how they became great. You mentioned about you know if you're ready and you should. How does one know one is like, ready? Yeah, actually, that, that's <laughs> like one of the things. Like Samji, like uh, once you cross the 25, you have your education done, right? What are the things you could ask yourself? Ki, you know, whether you're ready for the next, say, the householder stage of life or something, right? What? what, what how do you know you're ready to date? <laughs> <laughs> huh? That you're, you know, that you're ready to date now. Huh? And I don't know what you understand as date right now. When we were youngsters, date meant only going out, meeting a person, getting to know it. Just now, I heard from a teenager, teenager it means something totally different. So, but how do you know you're ready to date? I, I think Swamiji. Um, so, yeah, I like personally, if if you ask me, I, I would say that okay, I I have some uh, time to kill, right? And I also have no, no. I mean, please don't tell that. To, I was, I was don't tell that to the person you're dating. No, 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 no. no. So, I, I was explaining. So yeah, so that's something. So I, I've been a, a very um, focused uh, person as a student, family. So um, and then later on, I felt you know we, we sort of do try it out because everybody around me was like, hey, you know, do do something. You know, like experience you learn through it. So that was one thing. But well, for me, it was key. If I have the time, only then I'll I'll do because I don't want to compromise on my studies or my aspirations. So that's why I said, "Ki, I have the time to do." Tell me, girls, how would you feel if the guy told you that I'm just dating because it's a time pass? <laughs> also, Swami, there's also a feeling that oh, maybe you know we have to get married. But prior to that, if we date, we might get to know ourselves also better in a relationship and get to know the person. But yeah, I don't. I, Never thought of. If you ask your parents or your grandparents, how many years did it take for them to know each other? 
you think in a small date you can know each other <laughs> you just get familiar with each other and then you make your choices i mean it doesn't it i mean it sounds so risky and so dangerous where it comes to arranged marriages in this generation what are your tips for that <laughs> <laughs> you know when when i was young also i used to be horrified to think about these marriages arranged marriages particularly a stranger and we used to hear that they never used to see each other yeah and they got and their marriages worked see really in life we think of finding someone perfect and feeling that perfect love flowing through us and getting that perfect love yeah love is not something you fall into love is something that you rise into swami chinmayananda gurudev used to always say rise in love don't fall in love are in this life even one person you can learn to love unconditionally even friendship even uh, siblings even relatives you can just love unconditionally you know that that experience is bliss swami ji when we talk about this love and not just in a romantic context whether it be like friends we were even saying before like in our generation today loneliness is something that impacts so many people youth and like the older generation um but to achieve that depth in a relationship sometimes a little bit of sacrifice or compromise is needed and it's hard to tell when that sacrifice is you are being flexible you're being open you are showing love to someone versus like that sense of i'm kind of losing myself in this place and like even especially when it comes to these long term relationships like we might have certain ideas on the type of life we want to live how we want to do the big milestones in life and if we have to give some of that up is that actually the right relationship are we doing the right thing in like sacrificing or are we losing ourselves how do we know this see in every relationship there's give and take you cannot say that i'll only take there is give and take when there is love there is sacrifice but today the word sacrifice is a very reluctant giving in which actually is a compromise don't ever make your relationship a compromise yeah if you have to give something give it joyfully and lovingly do we ever say that mother sacrificed in in the sense of compromised no we never she doesn't even feel that she gave anything that is love but the moment she says i sacrifice my life for you and what you're doing nothing for me then it's a bargain so and in a bargain Who wins? <laughs> the one who knows how to bargain. How to most, bargain better? Demand the most. <laughs> yeah. And who loses? The one who's most vulnerable. Samji, how will one ever understand if one has to differentiate between is this a compromise or a sacrifice? If you are willing to do it with understanding for the well-being of both of you, then it's a sacrifice. and i mean sacrifice in the meaning of willingly giving out of love and if it's reluctant or with some ulterior motives because you are also benefiting other by will you compromise then it's a compromise as young adults when you enter uh, you know your first job or, or your first stint in the corporate life you sort of uh, interact with people who are much older to you uh, your bosses or your seniors right and they have been in this life since a long time right so they sort of sometimes like we enter with a lot of aspirations right with a lot of values we have from our schooling and our college days and then you go and uh, it's either a disappointment ki oh no, this is how things are or either the values clash right sometimes but you got to still work with them so how do you deal with that how much you like same thing like you deal with your parents but not as easy as it is with your parents <laughs> no because they will give in to you okay. but in anything you do your best that you can do in the framework that you are given at first especially when you are a starter 
na fresher don't go and try to rock the boat you can be easily fired build your trust you know with your work learn learn because even they have got something to teach they have also got experience and they may not be right and they may be wrong they may be even unethical sometimes but whatever is good learn from them because when you don't have any other option learn from them but build your own place there in the sense that you do your work so well immediately if you try to change the whole world first of all you don't have the experience that you are right or wrong no follow the system a company is running whatever it's doing must be doing something right no and there are systems into place learn and as you build your position as you build your status there as you get your recognition you will be in position to make changes but then you have to be patient right i think it's it's definitely a game of patience like how how well you can uh, yeah. but tell me something also what happens is that uh, sometimes then you you don't think about work anymore like you are like you know this this what is going to happen let me distract myself with uh, you know the yeah. weekends or let me distract myself with the uh, the food here or something like that like so so the focus it shifts from the work to something else because then you feel frustrated like sometimes yeah yeah that thing is happening so and it's a it's a very dicey situation because well you can't switch so easily uh, so you got to sort of make it out but somebody I mean, yes the that this focus on the learning you know i've got one suggestion for you give up this corporate life Yeah, come and work in the mission, not as a brahmachari, right? You'll get good food also, <laughs> <laughs> and you'll have a lot of fun also, and you'll be allowed to experiment also. So, Amiji, now there's a trend of, um, especially within the the legal field, that people change jobs every two to three years. So, when sometimes you're not even there long enough to create change, you're just there to. get there and then instead of applying for a promotion you just take another job and get whatever you're seeking from that next one when the culture is like that swamiji it's like sometimes a little bit hard to know whether you should propose change whether you should stick out the hard times so to speak or you know whether like what you should be looking for and then even if you think okay i'm going to pick a new job there's so many things you should be looking at like workplace culture work life balance like professional development opportunities pay so much, so on and so forth how should we navigate this swamiji the first thing i suggest to most of you youngsters try not to go for paid jobs because if you got ideas if you've got that spirit to make a change become entrepreneurs mm-hmm. become leaders mm-hmm. take the risk of starting something new no well, everybody can't do it i know that hmm? but those who can't do it then should not complain about it no it only shows the fickleness of our mind no and lack of clarity lack of clarity of our goals lack of clarity of hmm? what we should be doing what is really speaking no the vision of life that we should have the lack of clarity of that and until and unless we become clear to ourselves spend time with ourselves that what do we want now you have a job let's be honest people are trying to look out for a purpose why are you all working if you didn't need need money would you be working yeah yeah so you have taken up a job for an income that is your first and foremost purpose because today i run so many courses for the youth and now the youth ask me i'm not clear about purpose i don't know how to find a purpose pursing is clear what are you doing for what even if it is just for pleasure it's a purpose right note that what am i doing this for and is this what i really want so if i'm working for an income then don't complain about job satisfaction but if you want job satisfaction 
career according to your swabhava according to your nature then you will choose that career accordingly now say that time we were not wise we just chose to no, to study this or study that and now we are not very clear about our career itself don't get confused you need an income with whatever education you have take up a job it is giving you an income it's not about whether i enjoy it or not it's giving me an income you do your duty because you're getting something from it already with that spirit if we work then we start creating for ourselves opportunities for expressing ourselves where we want to express ourselves now this is what is happening today company heads are noticing one thing that people are not loyal they spend money on their training and the next thing is somebody gives them a little bit more money and they go now why don't we have faith and trust that our company will give us more money and which company will lose a good loyal you no know, efficient person in fact you know also from your homes and for them also even though now at this age or something they've been there for so many years they don't have increase of salary but they have got stability now suppose you get an increase of salary but you can be hired and fired any time and for months you don't have any income then the salary that you were getting in your own old company where you had a stable job eventually is paying you more than what this new company is paying you where you can be easily fired no so really speaking we do have to create a trend of loyalty then also we can demand company loyalty so we are not creating that and the result is today so much stress so much anxiety so much insecurities there are many many youngsters who wanted to leave their job and go they said it's a good job the atmosphere is quite good but oh they didn't give me promotion now the other company is giving only an extra title a little bit more income now you go to a new company really learn their culture relearn their you know methodology relearn a new job unless you want unless you want something different but everybody is i'm not happy here but then ask ourselves where are we happy that i was sitting in one group like this and uh, that place was stinking stinking and the one who was complaining the most that i can't sit here at all i'm going so went out from outside he came back inside there also it is stinking but we realized that when he left the stink went <laughs> and where he went the stink came which means the stink is where <laughs> with him now if our mind itself is fickle or is not clear or is unhappy or not committed then wherever we will go we will experience the same thing now how many jobs are you going to change how many partners are you going to change how many people are you going to date some way we have to understand i have to check myself therefore really speaking our culture vedanta teaches us first inquire into yourself so i mean that personal inquiry that swamiji was saying i find that um this is changing the topic a little bit but i find that social media helps and doesn't help with this because when you go onto instagram or tiktok or whatever social media app you use you can find really good advice on any topic like whether it's personal finance whether it's beauty cooking nutrition anything and so when you're thinking about career there's so many people out there that can give you good tips on how to do an interview how to update your resume and all of this is actually really helpful at least i found it quite helpful but then sometimes all of these internet like so called gurus right whether it's um they can confuse you a little bit because they have different 
goals that they are pursuing and their advice is in line with that. Um, what can Swamiji say about this, like in terms of how we use social media, what we should be thinking about when we are letting this influence our own inquiry into ourselves and our decisions? See, today a lot is available on social media and like everything in this world, whether it was television, whether it is even people or even real life gurus. Yeah, everything is available to us. We have to make our choice to the best of our capacity. Yes, sometimes we do make a mistake, but we learn and then we know that we don't have to trust this. So you must know where to search, how to search. Just like in real life, how to search for a real life partner. And even in real life, even the spiritual guru says that I have given, Krishna says to Arjuna, I have given you logically everything yeah, based on timeless knowledge plus my experience. I have told you, but now you think for yourself and you act. Now there are some people who can't think, so they have to just follow. They are blind followers, whether of social media, whether of spirituality or religion or the, the commercial world or the politics. They are blind followers. They cannot do anything else. So, they should also use their intelligence. But intelligent youngsters like you all, learn, think for yourself. You've got your past knowledge and experience also and apply that. Sometimes you just don't know anything and you see, think that this is a good advice. No. Cautiously practice it and if it gives you good results, then why not? Some things your common sense will tell you. This is not. And don't just do it because your sense doesn't tell you. Even if it sounds good, don't do it. Common sense should tell us what not to do. So Swamiji, you know, there's so much about self-love spoken on social media platforms. That is, I think it's everywhere in every possible manner, uh, maybe diluted, maybe, you know, gone beyond its meaning also. And somewhere it's even getting into being selfish now. So how does one draw the line and know that, okay, this is about self-love and this is, you know, being selfish? Until and unless you know yourself to be the self in everyone and do to others what you would do to yourself, it is not self-love. What this great rishis, the great scriptures speak about. Yeah? So, if your love is in a shell, it's shellfish. <laughs> you get it? If your love is that which pervades everybody, that is self-love, that is God-love. We don't know our self only. Love for self is natural. Nobody can say, I don't love myself. What you don't love is maybe your looks. That's not yourself. What you don't love is your mind, which is not yourself. So love for the self is natural. And that self, the consciousness, is the consciousness in everybody. Just like that one electricity is there in all the bulbs and the fan and the air conditioner and the heater. Yeah? The same self is in everybody. Ten different fingers. But do I hate any one of them? Because the self is in all ten. That self you can love, that self you love naturally because it is of the nature of love, it's of the nature of happiness. And the fact that you feel when you feel oneness with someone, you experience that happiness, you experience that love because you experience that oneness. So self-love is when you feel one with everyone. Swamiji, I just had um, a question about confidence, Swamiji. In our 20s, what is the best way to develop confidence, that sense of accomplishment? Each one of us is unique. Each one of us has a, 
or is here for a reason. You may not know it, but the universe knows it. God knows it. So know that as long as you are alive, because anything that is useless is extinct, redundant. As long as you are alive, you may not know your purpose, you may not know your worth, but the universe knows its worth. And therefore, if you don't have faith in yourself, have faith in the wisdom and love of God. And people say, I don't believe in God. Okay, doesn't nature. Yeah? Because nature has its laws, right? Mm. Even an insect, even a mosquito has its purpose. You say, what purpose? At least to wake you up. <laughs> Or maybe to make that invincible human being extinct. <laughs> you don't know. So, if you lack faith in yourself, have faith in God's love, wisdom, and faith in you. Keep the company of people who will give you confidence. Don't look out always for approval. You be a judge of your own work. And if it is not good, improve upon it. That way you'll develop confidence. In, in the Kindle life, we have the freedom, uh, freedom and licentiousness. So if you can just throw light on how they both are different. Because I'm very glad you've read that book by Swami Chinmayan and the Kindle life. That's what I read as a youngster also first. And every youngster should read that book. And even I heard, understood this word licentiousness for the first time, even though, you know, I was top in English in my school, I'd never heard this word. And, uh, and pretty much what we have been discussing you know, about this free dating and, uh, you know, free uh, changing jobs, etc. And all this goes in the name of freedom. Freedom of choice, freedom of doing what I want to do. But freedom has got meaning only when it's punctuated with duties. If and my freedom will have meaning or I'll have freedom if I respect the freedom of others. For example, you're coming on a crossroad. Now you can have traffic like in Australia <laughs> or you can have traffic like in Bombay. Yeah. When there's a red signal, Everybody thinks I, that red signal is an impediment to my freedom and wants to hmm, dash. But the other person also has got a right. Now, if all come and crash in the middle, finally everybody's freedom is gone, including your freedom. But if you just wait at the red light, it is not curbing your freedom. It is actually giving meaning to your freedom. Same way, if our rights are punctuated with our duties, then we can enjoy freedom. If our expressions are guided by our values in the world, then we have freedom. Otherwise, it's licentiousness, uncontrolled desire, which then lands up finally achieving nothing because everybody is flashing. So, this is a beautiful book that you have read, Hindu Life, Manual of Self-Unfoldment by Swami Chinmayan and the, the clarify most of your doubts of destiny, self-effort, you know, knowing yourself, career changes, yeah? what is love, what is also the cause of this world, all these things questions that we are actually asking all over social media. As I said, youngsters have asked these questions from time immemorial. And these two books, Kindle Life and Manual of Self-Unfoldment by Swami Chinmayananda would be very helpful to every youth possible. Therefore, I'm sure, I know some of you have read it. Some of you have not read it. You must read it. Yeah? And if you find that helpful to you, Share it with other youngsters because they'll be very helpful. No? 
even how to deal with crisis we have storm to perform to deal with stress you know know about career wealth life management techniques so these are beautiful material available maybe they're not trending on social media but those of you who are into social media you should make it trend you create trends like swami chinmayananda created when he was a youth and you think it was not it was worse at that time it was so bad at my time that even in my house i had to secretly read these books though i found it in my house only so it's nothing to be ashamed of but youngsters at that time today at least spirituality is a trend even if it's on social media no so you don't have to be feel shy or you feel an odd one out no but spread authentic spirituality and so authentic spirituality is about knowing yourself understanding your life and living your life intelligently so that your personal growth takes place and the growth of society also takes place you just don't follow trends you be a trend setter so swami ji like as youngsters right uh, the pace of life is pretty fast what are the things in a year if you can say like we should do to consolidate ourselves like spiritual retreats or sadhana camps or you know um, things like that right so i mean because um, when people have a rule to follow it's easier to not think more about it like for example if my dad tells me ki you have to go to this youth camp every year and then and then i'll be like okay fine other when i have to make my decision i have to look at my uh, leaves my this and that so some of the things which you can you know share with all of us ki do this and things would be good see start with take one of these good spiritual books to read every day a little bit maybe even a quote or a passage chinmaya mission runs weekly classes in most areas for youth particularly for young adults also we can say from the womb to the tomb <laughs> <laughs> yeah so this once a week at least take out that one or two hours to meet with like minded youth and create a forum not just to go drinking not to go just uh, create a forum where you have discussion on these matters so like minded people sincere people searching wanting and keep an anchor that you do have guidance from some of the beautiful books written by great master as you know swami chinmayananda himself was a revolting youth at that time because he was asking questions which he was not getting answers from so the media of that time <laughs> then we have number of camps but fixed camp that you can say at every year december month now from 18th to 25th of december we have a global youth camp which has which runs at our chinmaya international residential school crs some of you must have heard it one of the best residential schools in the country today the environment for youth is beautiful we run that and youth from round the world come there no and uh, topics are taken discussions take place activities are there so for the youth this is something that is very helpful it's followed by a family camp which you can come with the family which we have at chinmaya vibhuti near lonawala yeah. so near pune you can have that and in each area now once a year we conduct a course called as make it happen and this is very good not only gives you clarity about how to make your decisions how to recognize your purpose and with your purpose set your goals and set your goals not small but high and how to develop that confidence and create that mind shift that not only you have clarity about your goal but you can achieve the highest goals even beyond your imaginations no? in a short time and without tears in your mind 
so so what is available so see that you can take that time those courses you can do once a lifetime also if you do it it will help you lifetime <laughs> yeah definitely so very nice being with all of you this informal atmosphere and uh, spending time with these meaningful discussions some may be very you know humorous or even very light but i know that as youngsters we have also gone through such dilemmas which later on appears maybe for some people oh it's so simple it's so basic but it matters to the youngsters and therefore i'm very happy that you asked these questions and i do believe that people will find it beneficial so wish you all the best in your careers in your life and may you find a meaningful relationship <laughs> loving thank you swami ji for this enlightening session i think it's going to be with us for a lifetime and uh, before we go i think we should have a selfie with you swami ji yes yeah. <laughs> yes everybody say hari 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 hari